Hi, this is Dave Browskup, uh, Dr. Hit. This is the initial broadcast of my uh, podcast, my first episode. And I've chosen uh, one of my favorites, um, Static Holds. A great way to maximize the intensity of your training. They differ from traditional HIT training, high intensity training, which involves movement of a weight, two second raising, four second negative or lowering phase. With static holds, there's actually very little movement, um, if at all. Um, because we're holding, instead of raising and lowering the weight, we're actually holding the weight, usually in the um, position uh, just prior to lockout for 15 seconds. I, I uh, sometimes do 10 seconds, sometimes go a little bit, uh, maybe up to 20, 30 seconds. But uh, as opposed to raising and lowering the weight, we're actually holding the weight with a maximum weight, which uh, really works the muscle pretty much with maximum intensity. There's some extremely intense methods, but this one is very intense. Uh, is it safe? Well, a lot of people say, hey, you're using a lot of weight. There's no way this is safe. Uh, you're going to rip your muscle. You're going to hurt yourself. Uh, if done incorrectly, absolutely. But uh, if it's done safely, you're actually... Um, very unlikely to hurt yourself. Um, it can be used with isolation or compound exercises, obviously, to train the biceps, triceps. Um, most likely, you're going to do isolation, uh, form of the curl, form of the tricep extension, or uh, would be isolation. Um, compound would be the uh, seated, seated hip machine for the triceps. Uh, so you can do, uh, or you could do uh, palms facing pull downs for the biceps, and that would be a compound for the biceps. But um, so they're, they're excellent. Uh, but you can also use the isolation, the curl, or the tricep extension, or overhead extension, etc., etc. For those, um, they're, they're, they both work excellent. But the compounds are you're going to use the most weight, so that's some, a factor to uh, take into consideration. And, and that's true with uh, any uh, other type of hip training too. There's benefits to both ways. Where should the hold be done? Um, generally, it's recommended that it's. Um, the hold is done just prior to the point of lockout. This, this is the strongest portion of movement. allows you to use the most weight, which really taxes the muscles. Um, I've also done them at midpoint um, and even at the beginning, uh, although generally midpoint. And that um, that's not it's a nice variation. You're still using a lot of weight, not as much weight as prior to lockout, but quite a bit of weight. You're definitely taxing the muscle in a different way. So I do like to do them. Uh, midpoint as well um, and that's you know that, that way you're strengthening the uh, muscle in uh, different portions of the, the movement of each exercise um, is this isometrics well a lot of people say hey all you're doing you're holding uh, against a heavy weight you're, you're just doing a form of isometrics that's actually not true isometrics is um, muscle effort being used against uh, in an unmovable object, whereas uh, holds, you're holding the weight, uh, which does move some. You're holding a, a weight that's held in position, and uh, it is movable. It's a movable object, or I should say, a, a, a bar, a dumbbell, or I prefer selectorized machines. That's generally preferred. A, if they're easy to use, the uh, move the weight, um, weight selection change weight selection because you're just moving a pin or turning a dial but um, they can be done with free weights but it's definitely not asymmetrics uh, is a partner necessary well um, not absolutely necessary especially in the beginning it's recommended for safety and ease of use because you will be using a lot more weight than you typically use in um, with other forms of high intensity whether it's the failure four strips um, etc um, so not absolutely necessary, especially in the beginning, but uh, recommended because you don't want to wear yourself out or wear the muscle out lifting the weight into position. Uh, that will restrict the amount of weight you can use. And the idea here is to use a maximum weight that you can hold for 15 to 20 seconds. So by lifting it, you're, you're, the weak link is the lifting of the positive. So um, if you do have a partner and you're, you're pretty strong, you're you're more advanced, moderate to advanced uh, bodybuilder, 
you're going to be using enough weight that your partner is going to be working hard to help you lift them into position. The idea would be two training partners that can actually lift the weight or, or machine arm into position and have you hold it without having to lift it. But realizing in most situations uh, that I've run into, um, I, I as their trainer, help them lift the weight into position and they hold it. Um, I'm doing most of the lifting, so I'm sparing them uh, too much muscle inroading before the hold. Um, and again, it's kind of going back to the comparison of the typical rep set uh, hit, hit routines, say to failure, where you lift the weight uh, for as many reps as you, as you can until you can no longer do a complete a full rep. That'd be a two failure set. You're moving the weight and your weak link is the sticking point or, or weak position of the, of the movement. The, and you're, what this does is hold you back um, or, or lessen the amount of weight that you can use to the weak, weak point, weak link of your muscle. But we want to avoid that, and this protocol was developed to do such a thing. Uh, allow us to use maximum weights, not held back, not restricted by the weak link in, in an exercise, but the most amount you, of weight you can hold. You can hold a lot more weight than you can lift, so lifting the weight is, is going to hold you back or limit the amount of your success with static control or static holds. Uh, generally, uh, we're looking at uh, 10 to 15 second holds um, with a 10 second rest in between, allowing us enough time to get the lactic acid out of the muscle. It'll flush it right out and uh, take a couple of breaths and have the muscle would recuperates to a degree, to a big degree, and then we'll hit it with another hold. I do a total of um, one muscle, uh, one exercise per muscle, with eight holds per exercise is generally what I use, and that seems to work extremely well. Um, you definitely make uh, fast gains, uh, because you will be uh, really working uh, all of your muscle fibers, or, or as much as possible, of uh, your muscle fibers much more than you can with uh, regular rep movement training. So you definitely make uh, rapid gains in strength and size. And again, we went over where to hold the weight. Uh, uh, right before lockdown is, is max, is max uh, weight. You're going to hold the most weight. But uh, again, like I mentioned prior, I vary it. Uh, it's always good to vary it. It keeps your muscles uh, from getting used to the same routine, even even a high intensity routine, as hard as that is, your muscles actually do get used to high intensity training. So I vary techniques a lot. I don't do just one. Um, and in this episode, I'll just uh, pretty much wrap it up here. We're going to do a, a number of uh, shorter broadcasts, uh, but do a lot of different uh, subjects I think you'll find extremely interesting. But uh, say, uh, let's just run through a typical um, back routine with this. Uh, we, uh, a real good one would be a, a machine rows. So after a really thorough warm-up of five to six reps, not using a heavy weight, just a nice light weight, and then a few reps of a moderate weight just to get your muscles used to a heavy weight, not taxing your muscles, but just warming them up. Um, we want to, I always recommend pyramiding up a little bit rather than just going to the immediate max weight right away um, to avoid uh, injury. And I'm not saying a massive pyramid, maybe one or two holds to maximize your holds. If you'll go where you think is three quarters of the amount of weight you, you can hold, you know, where you've found that to be the case. And the, on the first hold, 10, 15 seconds, and then, um, but it's not 100% effort. The next one, the second one, I would make a max effort so that you're holding the maximum amount of weight you can hold uh, for 15 to 30 seconds. Um, and then uh, set that weight down, you know, lower the machine arm, rest 10 seconds, most, uh, almost assuredly you'll be lowering the weight, probably one plate. 10, 15 pounds, depending on the machine and the, and the muscle group. Hold another 15 to 30 seconds. Set uh, set the machine down. 10 seconds. Take some breaths. Let the lactic acid flush out of the muscles, and change the weight. Reduce it again, 
and so on until you've done a total of eight holds. So when I say pyramid up, just do it one rep and then just kind of get your muscles into that realm and then hit it on the second second hold, I should say, not rep, second hold, uh, max it out and then pyramid down as, as needed as your muscles get eroded and, and are weakened. Uh, but once and do one exercise, no more than one exercise per muscle group, or we will absolutely overtrain. Um, the shoulder routine would be similar. Uh, shoulder presses are my favorite there. Um, nice thorough warm up, same way. Lightweight, no taxing. And a few reps, say two or three, with a heavier, moderate heavyweight, just to get your muscles used to a heavier weight. And then do one three quarter resistance for the ten, uh, 15 to 30 second hold and then go max. Um, and, and in each workout, you want to try and increase the amount of weight you're using. So don't just uh, get, get in the um, rut of using the same weight, even though it's obviously still going to be hard. Uh, but don't get into the uh, practice of um, limiting yourself. Try and go up 5%, say, every uh, workout. And you won't always hit it, but you want to try and um, test yourself and, and try and improve by um, increasing the amount of weight. But uh, so then we do that, we do the 10 second rest in between. So uh, between each hold for a total of eight holds um, on each, uh, on the press. And then we would go on to the next exercise. But we want to start large muscle groups. I was just using that as a, as a um, example. But we're going to do legs, chest, back, uh, in, you know, the large muscle groups first. Then go to, say, shoulders. And then go bicep. I would switch to bicep because you use your triceps for the presses. Go to biceps, then triceps, and then abs, abdominals, and uh, I believe I hit everything. Uh, calves as well. Uh, but uh, you'll you'll definitely take an appreciation for the intensity of this form uh, of training because it is full blown, high intensity, very high effective uh, results come out of it. And uh, I'll be expanding on this one uh, in some future, near future podcasts.